I'm David Pincus. I am a Whitehead Fellow here at the Whitehead Institute for Biomedical Research in Cambridge, Mass. What we study is what I think is a really important problem, which is how cells deal with stress. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. I always loved math and science. My elementary school we, was, was really cool. It was a public school in St. Louis, but they had gotten a grant to start a science center. It was called the Center for Investigative Learning. And so from a very early age I was learning, you know, we had access to some microscopes and we got to see, you know, gross germs growing and, and I was always interested in that stuff. I, I didn't really know what it was to be a scientist. I didn't really know any. And I can picture what it was like to be a writer, a, someone who wrote books. You know, you sit and you write. I could picture what it was to even be an astronaut, I suppose. But when it came to what does a lab scientist do, it, I, didn't, I didn't have an example of that. So while I was sort of curious and interested in science, I never really considered it as a profession until actually in college when I saw the, my first scientist. I was like, oh, these are just people doing experiments. That seems pretty cool. So uh, unlike stress that you know, many people have, whether it comes to homework or personal relationships or whatever, turns out cells are also under a lot of stress. So what we think is that in, in neurodegenerative diseases, HSF1 is broken. So we would like to figure out a way of turning it on. Whereas in cancer cells, HSF1 is hijacked. And so we'd like to figure out how to turn it down. So what we're trying to do in my lab is to really study how HSF1 is both turned on and turned off so that we could hopefully get treatments both for neurodegenerative diseases and for cancer. So it's a pretty tough problem, but we're actually making a lot of progress. What we have here in this bucket of ice is little bacteria cells. And what we're going to do is take some DNA that we've mutated and put it into these bacterial cells so that we can make lots and lots and lots of copies of it. My job in the lab is, there's really two parts to it. One is I'm kind of the coach of my lab or the manager. So the four of us are really working together as a team, discussing their experiments and what they plan to do next, looking at the data they're generating, helping them interpret it, seeing what they think about it, seeing what I think about it, arguing and then coming to some conclusion about what it actually means. It turns out as you get further and further in science you do more and more writing. So I actually my background in English literature and philosophy where mostly you're writing term papers and these sort of things actually helps quite a bit now because I'm writing scientific manuscripts, I'm writing grants, pr plotting data, processing data, these sorts of things that you do on the computer. And then really I only have about a quarter of my time where I'm actually on the bench doing experiments myself. I kind of have taken on doing a lot of the grunt work in the lab. And what I mean by that is I do a lot of the molecular biology. So most of molecular biology is mixing small amounts of liquid into other small amounts of liquid. So what I spend a lot of time doing is actually mutating DNA and making new pieces of DNA that have never existed in the world before, plugging them back into the organisms that we study to assess how they work when we've changed it a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna let those sit on ice for a minute and hopefully the cells will take up the DNA. And uh, yeah. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this media that the bacteria like to grow in um, and transfer it into these tubes where I'm actually going to grow them overnight. But you always want to make sure everything is sterile. We want only the bacteria that we have on this plate, not the ones that are floating around in the air. So part of the way we help sterilize things is by having a flame. And this just sort of kills any bacteria that happens to be around in the air. There are a lot of little dots on this plate. And each one of these dots are a bacterial colony and these colonies are a bunch of bacterial cells each one of these small dots actually has over you know millions and millions of cells in it now a little further down the line is we hope we can integrate all of the things that we've learned and actually to make some therapeutic contributions so at some point we're going to and what we, we think we're actually close to this we're going to find what we hope are Achilles heels for this HSF1 molecule to actually develop the basic research all the way into a therapeutic. But that's really only one side of it because the other thing is there's something intrinsically beautiful from my own perspective about understanding how life works at this basic level. Learning how to see the world from a scientific point of view 
has really expanded not only my ability to, to actually do my work, but also the way I see everything else. So I would say, you know, learn how to look deeply at stuff, and science is one of the best ways you can do that.